Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess. I am the founder of a super small little skin and hair care brand uh, called Stark Skin Care. We've been around since 2011. So I used to make videos on YouTube um, and then I took a bit of a two year hiatus, but I am now challenging myself to do weekly videos again. So last week I did a video this week I'm sitting down and clearly doing my video with my proper camera. So again, I'm like trying to remember to look at the lens and not at the screen at myself. Still a very strange experience um, talking to a camera when you're not used to it. <laughs> anyways, I will get back into the groove, hopefully. But anyways, today I wanted to talk about some of the changes that my brand has gone through in the last 12 months to 18 months. So, one of the more exciting things, at least for me, is I re-released two of my best sellers, which is, um, even if you don't have a brand, you can probably imagine that it's a pretty nerve-wracking experience to do because you are messing with something that's already doing okay, but it was really, you know, a decision between do I release new products that are almost like products I already have or do I upgrade and update the formulas um, that I've had for so long. So every few years I do upgrade my formulas. Sometimes it comes with like a full rebrand like I did in 2016. This time I opted not to do a full rebrand um, just to do little little tweaks. Midnight and City, my two main facial oils. Um, Midnight is the nighttime one, City is the daytime one, but you can totally swap them according to your needs. They got an upgrade. Now, I'm not one of those brands that does a formula change and then like swaps out all the good ingredients for cheap stuff. I didn't get like bought out by Cody or something. Like it, it this isn't, I changed my formulas because my values as a brand um, are constantly evolving and the world is constantly evolving and I really felt that my two oils needed to just, first of all, as facial oils, as facial serums, they needed to have a little more oomph. There's just so much on the marketplace right now. There are so many facial oils. Like I thought back in 2011, 12, 13, whenever the green beauty market was just especially like on the indie scene as it was like starting to pick up, I was like, whoa, this is a lot of competition. Like how, you know, how do you stand out as a brand? How do your products speak for themselves? Um, well, having a really good formula is key, of course, but as more and more and more brands are just popping up with all of these like, eh, kind of facial oils, I wanted to make sure that my facial oils were actually facial serums, meaning that they're not just a blend of seed oils, which is okay, um, but that they're a lot more than that. So City, like I said, is the daytime oil. It used to be called City Recalibrating Oil. Um, that was the name change in 2016. But I decided to have something a little bit more straightforward and self-explanatory. So it's now called City Light Daytime Oil. <laughs> so it is a light textured yet, okay, this is how I like to say it, it's a light textured yet substantive, 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 I can't pronounce anything, uh, oil on the skin. Um, it's an oil that I like to describe as being juicy and bouncy, but light. So the, with the old formula, the drops used to come out really slowly, um, they now come out as you can see quite quickly even quicker if you're using it a little bit more often it's just that i have like three bottles of city on the go it is light it is yeah like i said light and juicy <laughs> it absorbs very quickly um i have like four layers of oil on my skin right now so it's not going to absorb that quickly but it has always been a great oil for people who are newer to using um, oils on their skin or they have oilier an oilier skin type but i really think that this is the type of um, skin oil that's going to be appropriate for pretty much everyone whether you have really dry skin or you have oilier skin if you're acne prone if you have sensitive skin um, if you are you know 
fighting the first signs of aging, which don't fight, don't fight your signs of aging, embrace your aging, but you know, blah, blah. Um, if you've got some, you know, fine lines that you want to juice up a little bit, this is a great oil for that. And one of the key components that I added to the new version is that it has um, an oil soluble version of vitamin C in it called tetrahexadesylosorbate. It's a very, it's so, it's different than classic vitamin C, which is l -asorbic acid in the sense that um, it doesn't, it's not stingy and or tingly. So if you, like me, have a hard time incorporating vitamin C into your skincare regimen, but you really do want to be using vitamin C. This is a great one because like I said, like I, I, there's no stinging. It's really easy to incorporate and um, it just feels really, really good. So I, that's an experience that I normally don't have myself with vitamin C. So whenever there's something lacking in my own skincare routine, I like to incorporate it into the Stark line because I make my favorite skincare products. <laughs> it's so convenient. So that is City in a nutshell. I will do separate videos for each of my products just because I feel like it's been a really long time since I've done that and things have changed. So I will like update those videos, but that is City in a nutshell. It's light, it's juicy, it's good for pretty much everyone and it's got vitamin C in it and a bunch of other good stuff. It's not vitamin C in a load of garb. It's like, anyways. It's own video. It's own video. Uh, Midnight is um, my nighttime oil, but also if like you can use it anytime, really you can. There's nothing that's like nighttime specific. There's no retinol in it, although it is vitamin A rich, um, which again, topic for another video. Midnight is the serum that I like to use on the nights when I'm not using retinol. Um, again, retinol should be its own video, but it is different than the predecessor in that it is now what I call an oleo gel. So it's like a thick oil. I think this one's like pretty much empty. Um, oh, I only have a few squirts left. But as you can see, I don't know if that's in focus. Whee! It's orange. It looks green on camera because I'm using like a warm light. Oh, it smells really good. Oh yeah, I wanted to mention too, in City, the percentage of essential oils has been dropped by quite a bit. So it smells, I think, okay, so different than the original City, but really similar in the sense that it's a green, fresh, outdoorsy, you know, coniferous tree inspired scent. I did change which type of coniferous tree just because of another overall change that I made with my brand, which is sort of my sustainability mission, which I will get into in a second or have its own video. But this is my video where I'm trying to like sweep over everything, but it's going to end up being four hours long, like let's admit it. So Midnight has become a thicker oleo gel or a thick oil serum. So that's why it now has these little pump bottles. Also, I have updated my labels so that all of the ingredients are now back here like they're supposed to be. Um, I spent a few years without the ingredients on my labels for a whole host of reasons, but um, decided that it was time to change that. So you will now have instructions and ingredients on the back of your labels so you can read about how amazing it is anytime you want. Um, so Midnight had a shuffling around of ingredients. Its main oil is now Metafoam Seed Oil, which is one of my favorite oils um, that totally falls in line with Stark's like new sustainability sort of focus. Uh, so I am trying to eliminate as many exotic ingredients as I possibly can and use local to me, so mostly like Eastern Canadian, Eastern Central Canadian um, plants that are, you know, I, I'm not doing anything that's like wild harvested, everything, uh, or almost everything. I mean, it's hard to say everything, but most, a lot of things <laughs> are sort of byproducts from other industries. They're sort of like, up, it's like upcycled kind of, or in the case of something like Metafoam, Metafoam is actually a rotation crop that farmers use in their fields um, for the years that they're not planting their usual crops and they're letting the, the soil go fallow, but you can't just have like naked soil because that doesn't like restore the nutrients. So um, many farmers use Metafoam 
as a rotation crop to keep the um, to keep their soil really healthy and uh, full of nutrients so that they can go and plant their crops the next year or the or I don't I'm not a farmer maybe it's two years I'm not sure um, but it's a great plant that is very high yield in oil and it just happens to be an amazing beauty oil I am obsessed with metafoam like you're gonna see it in I think city has it too like almost everything of mine um, if it doesn't contain metafoam it will be containing metafoam um, it's very interesting just again it's gonna have to be its own video but it has a really interesting um, chemical structure to it where um, it has a like really really long chain triglycerides which means that it's gonna stay sh stable for a very long time but which is great as a formulator and it's great for your products because it means that it's it's slow to go rancid um, but also it means that it is extremely high in antioxidants which is great for our skin also metafoam just has like a really beautiful texture and feel on the skin it's actually um, for an oil it's very lipophilic and I love lipophilic um, oil soluble things because it draws moisture into your skin um, just like a humectant does or very similarly to a humectant so it just makes it play with other products really really well because i want all star products to be able to layer beautifully that's always a big um very important factor for me so other things with midnight oh yeah okay so it's it's now called midnight resilience resiliency boost serum enunciate jess resilience <laughs> wow midnight resiliency boost serum what does that mean okay so essentially it's a barrier repair serum um but it doesn't have to be repairing if your serum if your serum if your barrier is okay you can also just use it to keep up what's working for you maintenance is always easier than you know fixing so it's a really good as i call it like maintenance mode oil um keep up your healthy barrier and the way that I did that is um, so the way any good barrier product works is that it's not just an occlusive meaning like a sort of like a shield on your skin it also has to feed your skin's barrier and your skin has um, very specific ingredients that naturally occur and we can kind of fake that with products and what I love is that there are so many great plant-based natural ingredients that just work really 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 well with human skin and I mean that's kind of like that is like the basis of my love of green beauty right there in a nutshell I just think that the bioavailability between like plants and people and hu like hu animals and, and, and plants just to be a beautiful and fascinating uh, relationship that kind of actually makes me like tear up just thinking about how uh, climate uh, climate change and everything yeah we all know okay it's 2021 we all know what's going on right now it's really scary and then think just yeah anyways um, so I do love me some plants which is why you know my sustainability mission with Stark has kind of shifted I don't want to be using things that are rare and precious and blah blah no I want the common stuff I want the things that thrive whenever there is a drought stuff that can grow in the nooks and crannies of deserts um, you know especially stuff that's local to me like that is to me um, kind of you know we have to stop like pillaging our jungles um, and use more local things so I just digress that was so that is in a nutshell sort of the sustainability thing that's going on but let's go back to midnight um, midnight is using like I was saying plant-based the three things that skin really that your skin's barrier really needs to thrive not just survive um, which is lipids cholesterol and ceramides so lipids come from plant fats um, so any any pretty much any good seed oil is going to give you some good plant fats cholesterol comes from in this case it is a phyto uh, phytosterol <laughs> like phyto cholesterol um, from lupine which is a really interesting extract from 
lupin seeds, white lupin seeds specifically. Um, it also helps rebuild collagen and I will definitely have to do a separate video just on the ingredients in Midnight. Um, I think the way that I formulated this was quite clever, I must say, but um, Anyways, I will have to do a separate video. And then there's also ceramides, um, just from a ceramide complex, that has been added to Midnight. It smells very similar to the original. Is it the same? It's almost the same. The seed oils in it changed. Um, and so there's a bit of that, like that underlying scent that has changed, but it's still a Neroli dominant uh, facial serum. It is still the precious baby of the line. It's still the most expensive, coming in at 68, which is like way too cheap for this product. <laughs> um, same with City for a vitamin C oil and just for the quality of the ingredients. It's only, I think it's $40. I should know my own prices, I don't. It's either 40 or 42, underpriced. So don't let my middle of the road prices confuse you. That's just the way it is here. Um, I don't have super fancy bottles and labels, so you know, my stuff isn't $200, but it could be. <clears throat> mm. So, what else is new with Stark? Um, I mentioned last video that I am doing my own shipping. The cool thing about that is I look at everyone who has made a purchase, I look at their purchase history, and if I think that you are lacking something from Stark, I will send you a sample. So if I've noticed that you've ordered from me, like yesterday, um, someone had ordered from me 22 times, yes, 22 times, and that's, I have a lot of repeat customers, okay? Like if I'm just to like do a little brag right now about, you know, my, the history of my business, I don't have a lot of customers, but the customers that I do have, um, I have a really high repeat rate, if that tells you anything about my brand. If you've never bought from me and you're like, mm, I don't know, should I trust this weirdo? Um, well, my customers do, so you can take it up with Susan yesterday. From yes Susan from yesterday. <laughs> um, so she had ordered me ordered from me 22 times, but I noticed that there was like two, three things that she had never tried. And I was like, Susan, you gotta try. You gotta try. You've never tried Everlasting. You've never tried Eclipse. You need to try these. So um, she got some samples. So new customers, customers who haven't tried um, a diversity of my line or sometimes too, like for example, there's a lip mask that's about to come out. Um, I am sending out samples of the lip mask. So I will show you. This is, let me just see if I can focus. This is Moon Dance. Um, it is my lip mask, so I will apply it. So, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. It's nice and thick, but not too thick. Um, it's sort of my version of... I think I mentioned this last video. It's sort of my version of the Bite Beauty Agave lip mask before they reformulated it. I am like still using that original formula, like just sparingly, because I still really, really like it, but I'm gonna run out. <laughs> and if you're a fan, you're gonna... Did you guys just hear a honk? Um, if you're a fan, you're probably running out of the original one too. This is my version of it. Um, it's not the same. But I didn't, I mean, you know, don't want it to be exactly the same. It is probably my most controversial product in a sense because it's my first non-vegan product uh, depending on your definition of veganism. So I don't remember if I mentioned this, but I have someone who I consider to be like my vegan authority. Um, I am no longer vegan. So I'm like, who am I to say, like decide what is vegan what isn't there are animal based products in it but they're all cruelty free so there is there's beeswax there's lanolin and there's um, hyaluronic acid um, which depending I mean mine is mine is actually vegan but it can also come from uh, coxcomb so it sort of depends on where you get it from but um, mine is vegan and um, but I guess lanolin and beeswax are not. Um, so I asked a few 
vegans. Um, a couple of my customers decided to cancel me because I asked whether or not the vegans amongst my, at least my Instagram following, um, whether or not they would be cool with that. They straight up said, well, we've been with you for 10 years now, but this is the end of our relationship together. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Uh, which I think is very extreme. I mean, their decision to make, but I'm always sad to see customers go. But anyway, but anyways, um, but my vegan authority, they're sort of like kind of semi-famous in the vegan world. I'm not going to say who they are just because, you know, whatever. But um, I very much trust their opinion on these things. They said, if it's cruelty free, an animal wasn't killed or crushed to obtain it, um, that's okay. So there are very, you know, there's apias um, or like beekeepers who, you know, treat their, their bees amazingly. Um, and so beeswax isn't a big deal. It's going to be for some, it's not going to be for others. I'm not really here to argue that. I'm here because I love the effects of beeswax in lip products. Um, it makes a huge difference for me, and I know it makes a huge difference for a lot of people, so I wanted to include it. It's the same with lanolin. There is nothing natural that is like lanolin. It is so unique um, in its healing capabilities, especially for lips, and lips are a very special body part because we can't grow hair there, we can't, it's very thin, um, we can't have natural oils there, it's basically a mucous membrane that has like evolved onto the outside of our face. That sounds so nasty, I know, <laughs> but that's exactly what it is. It's the same skin as like the inside of your cheek all the way down like into your stomach. It's the same type of skin. So like it's really not meant to be out and exposed to the air. I mean, obviously we're pretty adaptive and it, it is okay, but this is why getting chapped lips um, is so common and why we need specific products for our lips. Um, side note, especially if you use retinol and it's migrated to your lips, wow, that really, really messed up my lips at the beginning of the summer. But between starting to use, finally, SPF lip balm, um, and I have a whole highlight on my Instagram about my favorites, between that and then using Moondance at night as like a nighttime lip mask, I don't apply lip balm very often. My lips have been in super good shape all summer, not dry, not cracked or flaking, you know, moist and, and plush and luscious. -ish. <laughs> um, what else? Yeah, lanolin. There is also, I don't remember. What did I say? Oh yeah, hyaluronic acid, making this a very luxurious lip mask. I wanted to bring, I didn't want a lip balm. I might come out with lip balms again, but I didn't want a lip balm. I wanted something different. I wanted something special. I wanted something that was like your luxury lip treatment. Um, and the main ingredient is kupachu butter, which is my favorite butter. Yes, it is an exotic. I use it sparingly though. And it is also a lipophilic type butter or oil. So meaning that it draws moisture and it holds it there. So it's kind of like the closest thing that an oil or a butter can come to being a humectant, at least in my opinion. Um, but then yeah, there's also the hyaluronic acid. So it is flavored um, a little bit with uh, food grade honey flavors and sweetened a little bit. But just a little bit, it's just it's just a smidge. And there's also one of my favorite, favorite ingredients that I'm like, I need to put this in a facial oil, like maybe just a standalone product. I don't know, because I'm obsessed with it. Strawberry seed oil, really, really nice. So there's also strawberry seed oil in it, and that is kind of it. Um, it is a great little product. I can't wait to release it. I don't know when it's gonna be, because I'm also, Right now, like, there's a lot. There's a lot happening right now. There's my hairline. There's the lip mask. I'm already starting to think about, you know, uh, my version of Black Friday. So that's coming up kind of soon. My 40th birthday soon. Scared, scared, scared. <laughs> um, and I have like this big collaboration that's like about to be announced imminently, but I don't think I can quite announce it yet. 
So I'm kind of like, ooh, when do I put out a new product with these other things going on? It's kind of, um, timing can be kind of hard. Plus I don't have like a whole batch of this ready yet. So I don't know exactly when it's going to be launching, but it should be soonish. It's not up on my site yet or anything like that. Um, but yeah, so that's some of the new things happening. Um, let me just check. I wrote down, I have a little list here. Oh yeah, I also completely updated my website semi-recently so that it's more mobile friendly. Um, if ever you have an issue with my website, please DM me, shoot me an email somewhere on it, on wherever. Just let me know if you're having an issue because I can't always catch things myself. So I do rely on um, my customers and, and just visitors and whatever to help me out if they find any bugs, if anything has crashed, if anything's not working. Um, I'm also doing this thing with Carbon Click where you can add two dollars to your order um, to help offset to help offset carbon emissions. And I really carefully vetted Carbon Click to make sure it's not just some like BS company. It's not. They really use. Um, so it's every every time a customer purchases from me. And, and clicks on it, it's $2, but then I also have like a monthly subscription to them. So, um, and they have lots and lots and lots of online retailers that contribute. And so they do specific projects like reforestation and all kinds of stuff. Um, they used to be, they used to, I can't remember, the CEOs of Carbon Click used to work for like Zappos, Zappos or whatever, and something else. Oh, I think my. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so the CEOs of Carbon Click used to work for, I think, Zappos um, and maybe another, I don't know, maybe like Amazon or something. Like some of the retail, e-tail giants and um, just felt very nervous about um, just you know e-commerce and its impact on the environment. And so they decided to start Carbon Click. Um, so they're really like, it's, it's one of the few of these types of companies where it's, it's, it is worth it. Um, my husband also vetted it for me and he's, his bullshit meter is higher than mine. So, oh yeah, I have a new blog. It's called The Lather, um, where, yeah, anyways, trying to create content, content there as well. Um, so do go and check out my website. There's lots there. Um... You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna leave a discount code below because you've watched this whole video. And if you've never checked out my brand before, I would really love and appreciate it if you did. Um, I've been doing this for a long time. I'm extremely conscious and careful and deliberate and intentional with everything that I create. Um, I've never had any like investors or, you know, I'm a true indie company, not like the, a lot of the indie brands, indie beauty brands now that they're like, okay, we got some branding. We got a good idea. Let's get some venture capitalists. That's not how it happened here. So, um, there's nobody that has any, you know, hands in my pockets or telling me what to do or looking for some cash from me. So it's purely just, I'm just supporting my family with this. Just, <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I would be thrilled if you checked out my products, if you bought from me. Um, so yeah, I will leave a discount code below. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your support.